often has it happened that negative consequences resulted from misunderstandings? And how could these negative consequences flip into national folklore and inspiration? What is the likelihood that international geopolitics could affect a small developing outpost in the beginning of the Zionist movement? The tragic but heroic battle at Tel Chai, which occurred about a hundred years ago, happened due to a series of chain reactions to events. The Tel Chai courtyard combines the story of the brave and determined pioneers in the early days of the Yishuv, as Jewish Palestine prior to the State of Israel is called, as well as the amazing story of the legendary Joseph Trumpeldor. A visit to the Tel Chai courtyard brings us back in time by a hundred years. Tel Chai means the hill of life, but here visitors can witness the scene of the battle where six defenders sacrificed their lives. Everything has been preserved just as it had been 100 years ago. The late 19th century saw the beginning of the Zionist movement with numerous settlements springing up all over the Ottoman-controlled Palestine. These settlements had the blessing and financial support from the Baron Rothschild. In 1906, he purchased land all the way north on today's Israel's Lebanon border in the beautiful Galilee Panhandle in a town called Matula. There wasn't enough land to work there, so more land was purchased further south in Tel Chai. There's only a six-kilometer distance between the two places, but in those days, it was a two-hour commute. Eventually, a courtyard was built in Tel Chai, and a small community was established. At the time, there were only four Jewish settlements way up north, consisting of 260 pioneers who were surrounded by approximately three to 4,000 Arabs. These settlements were cut off from the rest of the Yishuv, and life was exceptionally hard. Many pioneers found the conditions too difficult, and they abandoned these settlements. Reinforcements were hard to get. Many of the settlers were of Russian origin. When World War I broke out, the Ottomans viewed these settlers as enemy of the state, and they were forced to leave for the duration of the war. Once the war ended in 1918 with the Ottoman defeat, the settlers were permitted to return. And with this defeat, the winners, the French and the British, were anxious to cover up the former empire for their own colonial aspirations. Suddenly, this small area found itself caught up in a geopolitical conflict. The French and the British were dividing the territory, and this small region originally found itself under the French jurisdiction. The local Arabs and the Bedouins didn't want to be under French rule. The Jews also preferred the British, who had promised the Jewish homeland under the Balfour Declaration. The Zionists wanted this area to be included in the future Jewish state. The Tel Chai settlers tried to remain neutral, but they were suspected by both the French and the Arabs. In the meantime, the security situation greatly deteriorated. There were political and religious unrest. Violence increased with numerous incidences of assault and looting. There was a desperate need to shore up defenses, and that task was assigned to Joseph Trumpeldor. Joseph Trumpeldor was a native Russian who had wished to combat the anti-Semitism in his native homeland by being superior and proving himself. He fought and distinguished himself in the Russian army, was wounded, lost an arm, and even though he could have been released, Trumpeldor returned to active duty. Eventually, in 1911, he made Aliyah. As a native Russian with the onset of World War I, Trumpeldor was expelled with the others from Palestine. He arrived in Egypt with, together with the Eb Jabotinsky, they broached the British to establish a Jewish legion to fight their common enemy. This was the beginning of the Zionist Mule Corps, the first Jewish military unit in almost 2,000 years. While the French and the British were negotiating the borders of their mandates, the security situation of the northern Galil had greatly deteriorated. They were basically isolated settlements with additional manpower and supplies slow to arrive. Towards the end of 1919 and the beginning of 1920, two defenders were murdered. A great debate raged in Tel Aviv between Jabotinsky, who wished to evacuate the settlements, stating that they were indefensible, and David Ben-Gurion, whose philosophy was to expand wherever possible, insisting that these four settlements were northern outposts. If these settlements were abandoned, this would encourage attacks on other settlements and the Zionist enterprise would be endangered. The settlers themselves, a group of 20, were determined to remain. All they asked for was more volunteers to aid in the defense. As one defender said, Our eyes longed to see volunteers coming to relieve us, but we hoped in vain. Only a week after this debate, on March 1, 1920, a group of Shiite Arabs came down from Lebanon and accompanied by local Arabs, they broached Tel Chai. Under the pretense that they wanted to search for French troops, they demanded to be allowed to enter the courtyard. The Jews fired a shot in the air, a sign for Trumpeldor and more fighters to come to their defense. 
Trumpeldor rides with ten additional men, but they were greatly outnumbered. Trumpeldor negotiated with the Arabs and finally acquiesced to allow the local Mukhtar plus six others to search the premises. Exactly what happened next is uncertain, but it is believed that when the Arabs arrived upstairs, they met Devorah Drachla. She let out a scream that someone was attempting to steal her weapon. A shot rang out and the battle commenced. Trumpeldor was shot in the hand and the stomach. Eventually, the Mukhtar requested to evacuate, declaring that it had all been a misunderstanding, and he was given permission to do so. The Jews agreed to a ceasefire. But while the Arabs were evacuating, one of the defenders, unaware of the ceasefire agreement, shot at the retreating Arabs. This resulted in a major exchange of fire that lasted all day. After a brave and valiant stand, the Jews realized it was futile to continue, and they decided to evacuate. Trumpeldor, who was critically wounded, was carried to Kfar Giladi. On the way, as his strength was giving out, legend has it that he uttered the famous words, Never mind. It is good to die for one's country. These words became a symbol and an inspiration for the Zionist struggle. He is remembered as one of Israel's first national heroes who exemplified the Zionist fighting spirit. In all, six defenders and five Arabs were killed during that day's battle. Subsequently, the Arabs burnt down the courtyard and the other settlements were abandoned. About a year later, the boundary between the French and the British mandates were finalized, leaving this area in British control. This brought stability to the region. The settlers returned and re-established their communities. Eventually, the town of Kirat Shmona was created in this location. It was so named in memory of the eight, Shmona in Hebrew, who fell. A monument of a roaring lion designed by Abraham Melnikov was unveiled in the cemetery in 1934, commemorating this battle and those eight individuals who sacrificed their lives for this settlement, the two prior to the infamous battle and the six who fell that day. The lion with its head facing towards the heaven as if in a defiant roar emanating from it stands as an iconic image to the bravery of those who fell determined at all costs to defend what they had built. Tel Chai is one of the compelling stories in the history of the emergence of Zionism. This battle was the first official confrontation between the Jews and the Arabs. It is preserved in the ethos of Israel's history with the recounting of the tenacious battle to achieve a Jewish presence in its northern border. Tel Chai stands as a memorial to the history, the battle, the defenders, and those who sacrificed.